All right, guys, just back with another uh, video today. Just wanted to show uh, this video that Pierre Paul yeah, put it up, uh, put out today, and it's called "Here's How Wackonomics Works," or does it? So let's have a look, and then we'll comment on it after, like usual. When you have more money buying fewer things, you have higher prices. That's the reality, or how the cost of everything is going up because the size of our economy is going down. We have a smaller GDP per capita than we did five years ago, the fastest shrinking economy in the G7 since the year before COVID. Now, why is this happening? Because we have an extreme ideology. I call it wackonomics. <laughs> works, or better yet, doesn't work. The government piles on heavy red tape and taxes to punish entrepreneurs and workers who try to make things. So they make less things. And because we're running short, the government thinks it can make up the difference by borrowing money and printing money. And that's why he's doubled the national debt in just nine years, adding more debt than all prior prime ministers combined in one decade. Now, what does that mean for the economy of the present? Well, we've added $700 billion of new coins, bills, and bank deposits to our economy. That is a roughly 37% increase in our money supply, during which time our real economy grew by about 4%. So, Money is growing almost 10 times faster than the stuff that money buys. Evidently, if you have an economy with, say, 10 apples. Of course, apples. Right, 10 apples and $10. It's a buck an apple, right? You double the number of dollars to 20, but you still only have 10 apples. You're not twice as rich. It's just that each apple costs twice as much. That is inflation or Justin inflation, right? Yeah, you know, again, just just more proof that liberals are just really, really bad at math, and they can't seem to understand that. You know, so it's just, you know, it's just another day, another 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 day where Pierre Polyev is just absolutely just taking it to Justin Trudeau. I mean, as we all know, they just suffered a devastating loss in a by-election just a few days ago where they lost a, uh, a 31-year stronghold. The last time they had an election, the Liberals won by 25 points, and they lost it. So that's devastating news. And you can see it in their faces when they're talking about it. They're just like, oh, man. If we lose strongholds, are we going to win toss-ups? Not many of them. Are you going to flip conservative ridings? Nope. And Pierre Polyev was just putting his boot right on the Liberals' neck. I mean, he is just... The 2025 election is going to be a massacre. I mean, at this point, it's just damage control, right? It's not about... If you're the Liberals and you really think you can win, of course they're going to say they think they can win, but if they really think that, I mean, they're just out to space. It's not about winning or losing for them at this point. Is It's basically just damage control right now. It's okay. Can we stop them from winning 225 seats? Maybe. I don't know if they can stop them from winning 200, but I mean, really, that's keep it to as close to 200 as we can at this point, because it's just with Trudeau at the helm, it's a sinking ship. And now there's multiple MPs who are anonymously reporting to journalists saying that they want him gone. He's going to cost us all of our jobs, no matter what kind of campaign we put forward, like Leslie Church, who for a liberal probably put together a pretty good campaign in a liberal stronghold. And that wasn't enough. These other MPs are terrified. Most of them already know they're going to lose their jobs, right? They're going to lose at least 100 seats or so compared to what they have now. Maybe not quite 100, but it's going to be a devastating loss. The ones who think that they're going to remain, it's like, well, you know, I'm in a liberal stronghold, so you know, I'm safe. I won't be losing my job. Now they're worried too. They're all worried. And yeah, maybe there's no more popular uh, person than that they could put as you know, the, the Liberal Party leader, because the, <laughs> every other option, including Mike, Mark Carney, rather, is not a popular option. Justin Trudeau is still the most popular person in that party. So it's like you want him to resign, but for who?
No one likes anybody else. Christian Freeland, like I said, Mark Carney, Mark Holland, the guy who just, the little bow tie wearing puppet who can't stop having temper tantrums. I mean, give me a break. I mean, he, the, all these guys are so ridiculous and they're a lot like Justin Trudeau. And they're realizing that if you align with Justin Trudeau in any way, that's election poison right now. Yeah, there's, what, 15, 16 months until the next election, but they have so much work to do and so many mistakes and scandals to get past. There's just, there's no hope that they win the next election. There's zero chance. So instead of doing what's best for Canadians and calling an election to, so that we can decide what we want, they're basically you know, renting the house and looting it before they have to leave, before they get kicked out. They don't own, a, own the house. They're just renting it, and they know that, okay, uh, we're about to get kicked. We're about to get evicted here, so let's just take everything we can from it. And then that way, when the Conservatives come in, they'll have so much work to do. It'll take so long to get done, or even just to make progress. As soon as they get in, the Conservatives, rather, get in, the, the Liberals, the NDP, the Bloc, is, oh, okay, guys, you got your Conservative Prime Minister. How come he's not doing anything yet? Most people will understand that it's going to take some time, but there will be some very impatient people. People who say, you know what, it's been two years, there's no major progress. I don't know how long it's going to take. Maybe it's two, three, four years. I don't, I don't know. The damage that's been done to this country from a reputation standpoint, from a financial standpoint, from a respect standpoint, I mean, everyone's laughing at us right now. I mean, it, it's going to take a long time. And the, the better we, the, the quicker we can get to an election... The, the quicker things will start to turn around and the better off Canada will be. However, I just don't see Trudeau's ego allowing him to step down. By September, maybe he faces so much pressure that every MP makes it public, hey, listen, we need you to go. At that point, maybe he does. Even then, I'm not sure he'll go. I think the only thing that would make him go is if Mary Simon said, listen, you can either resign or I'll remove you. Right? So just resign to make it look like it was your choice. But Otherwise, I'll make it my choice and you'll be gone just to save the Liberal Party, which Mary Simon is uh, apparently a fan of, if you don't know much about her. Um, so, yeah, let me know in the comment section. Do you think there's going to be an election this this September? Or am I being naive with, with having so much hope? Or do you think we're going to have to wait all the way till October 25? I hope I'm right, but I also uh, I don't have a lot of confidence in that, considering who we're dealing with here. Um, so that's going to be it for this uh, video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps a lot. And I'll be back shortly with another video.